So now that you know how to draw straight paths by essentially playing connect the dots and just clicking and moving and clicking and moving, now you're going to be clicking and dragging to produce curves. So again, I will go to file and open. On my desktop, I'm going to find my chapter 10 folder and in 10.1, the second file is curved paths. So not a straight line on here. I'm going to zoom in on this curve. And what I want to do is take that same pen tool. I already have the white arrow activated from the previous demo. I've got my pen tool. Now, instead of just clicking and let go, and you click and let go, that's just going to produce a straight line. Delete, delete, or backspace, backspace on my PC. Now what you have to do is tell Photoshop what angle you want your curve to go and about what height you want your curve to go. So the general rule for drawing with the pen tool is before you draw a curve, you want to look at the length of that curve. And then you're going to click and drag about 30% the length of that curve. So right here. If my curve starts here and goes up and to the right, and it's a pretty good distance, I'm going to press and hold and push my mouse up and to the right. If the curve is going up, say, 60 degrees, I push and go up 60 degrees up to the right. As soon as you let go of your mouse, get away from that little bar. Okay, put your cursor on the curve and follow that like again like a train on the tracks the train goes up the hill now the train is coming down the hill and down to the right so i'm going to press and hold and pull down and to the right at the same angle the curve is going down so even though i'm dragging my mouse down here i'm actually looking at the way it's bending the curve up here so that's part of the confusion about working with the pen tool. You click and drag up because you want your curve to go up. At the end, you click and drag down because you want the curve to continue to go down. But as you are dragging down, you're actually looking at the way it's bending it up here. Okay, it's like walk forward, but look backwards. It's kind of weird. But that's how you do it. So I'm going to do that curve one more time. Delete, delete, or backspace, backspace on a PC. If I look at the length of the curve, and I know the curve is going up and to the right at 60 degrees, I'm going to go up and to the right at 60 degrees. I go about 30%. I don't go way up there. I don't go way up there. I go up to the right at the angle that the curve is going, about 30% the length of that curve. Every time you let go of the mouse in your head, you should be hearing the words, move away. Okay? Talk to yourself. This pen goes up and now it comes down. You're not dealing with these lines yet. You are tracing the curve. So this curve comes down to the right at 60 degrees. I press and hold and I continue to go down and to the right. But it's bending the curve upward. Every time you're done, command click on a Mac or control click on a PC to deselect the points. You can hold your space bar for your hand tool. You can push this over. I'll just zoom out a little bit so we can see the entire curve right there. And notice the distance from here to here. That's pretty short. So 30% of that is going to be a pretty short line. Short curves get short lines. From here, the curve goes up. So I push it up. I let go and move away. Here, the curve is coming down and to the right. So I press and hold and continue down and to the right. As soon as I let go here, move away. This curve turns and comes back up and to the right. So I'm going to press and hold and go up 
and to the right. And even though I'm going up here, it's bending the curve down here. So every time I let go, move away. This train goes over the hill, comes down the hill at, let's say, 70 degrees. So I press and hold and continue down the hill at 70 degrees until my curve bends over the scan. Command click on a Mac to deselect or control click with a PC. I can hold my space bar for my hand tool. And you'll notice at all this time, the paths panel has been recording what I've been doing from the very first time I clicked with that pen tool. So now we have a bouncing line. And here's the trick. From here to here is a pretty short distance. So 30% of that is going to be a pretty short line. The curve goes up. So I go up. I let go and move away. Now the curve is coming down to the right. So I press and hold and continue down and to the right. But when I let go of my mouse, the next curve starts at a corner where these little lines kind of bounce. Whenever you are going to start a new object or a new segment from a corner, you have to hold your Option or Alt key on a PC. If you don't, watch what happens to my first curve. And now I flipped it and I've ruined my drawing almost from the start. Okay, so if that happens, you go to edit, undo. If you look ahead, you are always looking ahead. What is the next thing I have to draw? The next thing I have to draw is another curve that starts from a corner. So on my Mac, I hold my option key. On my PC, I hold alt because I'm starting from a corner. Now the first curve stays how it is and the next curve goes up and to the right. I let go of my mouse and my option or alt key. Let go of the keyboard. You do not touch the keyboard when you are at the end of your curve. You just click and drag down because the curve is going down. You are only holding at the start of the curve. So right here, the next curve is long, so I'm going to have to drag 30%, which is longer. But the next curve starts from a corner. I hold my Option or Alt key. Now the third curve starts by going up. I let go of the mouse and the keyboard. I do not touch the keyboard at the end. And here at the end, it's coming down and to the right. So I'm going to press and hold and continue to go down and to the right. A longer line because I'm stretching a much longer curve. Every time I'm done with another segment like this, command click on my Mac or control click on a PC to deselect. You can always hold your space bar for your hand tool. Now I have a curve that dips way down and comes way back up. So instead of dragging at an angle, I'm pretty much going to be dragging straight down because my curve goes down. Every time I let go, move away, and now I follow the curve. Now it turns and goes straight up, so I will go straight up. Let go and move away. Now it turns and comes back straight down, so I will go straight down, let go, move away, and now it turns and goes straight back up, so I go straight back up. If I decide that didn't quite make it, you can always hold your command key on your Mac, control key on a PC, you get that white arrow, and that lets you kind of bend and manipulate those curves a little better for finer details, but I like this. Command click on my Mac to deselect or control click on my PC to deselect. Space bar will activate my hand tool. And again, you're going to see that small circle called the loop because this is one long continuous closed border. 
So I'm going to start right here. Press and hold and the curve goes up. When I let go of my mouse, move away. I follow this curve. Now it turns and comes down and to the right. So I'm going to press and hold and continue down and to the right. As soon as I let go of my mouse, move away. Now it turns and goes back up to the right. So I press and hold and go back up to the right. Let go and move away. Now it turns and comes almost straight down. So I'm going to press and hold and continue straight down. I let go, move away from that area. It turns and comes across the bottom to the left. So I'll press and hold and continue over to the left. I let go of my mouse, move away. Now it turns and comes right back up to the start. So I press and hold and continue going up and up and up and up. Even though I dragged up here, I was drawing the curve down here. I can zoom out. Look at the whole page right there. I've got every line traced. So again, on my paths panel, Photoshop doesn't know I'm done tracing. So I'm going to double click on the words work path. We'll call that curved paths. What I would always recommend is you click once down below the name to deselect everything. Then you click once on the name to reactivate everything. And I want your visual proof that you did this right. So I've already set up my same color. You could do one in red, one in green, one in blue, or I'll just do them all in red. That's fine. I already have the brush set up from the last file. But remember, when we apply the stroke, let's see what we get. I go to my paths panel, click the pop-up menu, stroke path with the same brush. I didn't turn on simulate pressure yet. Okay, so when I click OK, it's just going to look like fat spaghetti noodles all over the page. Okay, but I want to see what that simulate pressure button does. So I'm going to go to edit, undo, and then I'm going to set up a pressure setting for my brush just to show you what the simulate pressure button does. I'm going to go to window menu, brush settings. Okay, there's a preview of that fat little spaghetti noodle. Your brush is going to be the same thickness all the way through. But what you can do is when you click on the word shape dynamics, not the checkbox, like your layer styles, click on the word, that will activate this shape dynamic setting. Okay, notice there is a control panel right here. The control is turned off. But when I click it and I say pen pressure, notice what that did to the line. That is asking Photoshop to mimic the look of a graphics tablet, pressure sensitive tablets. So now when I close up that little double arrowhead, I go to my paths one more time, click the pop up, stroke the path, and this time I'm going to simulate the pressure and now I get a unique line like that. Click down below and I've got a tapered line like I barely pressed on my graphics tablet. Now I'm pressing harder and harder and hardest and then I start to let go of the pressure and it thins out right there. That's like where you would lift it off the graphics tablet. So that's how you simulate the pressure. Just so you know why that's there and what it does, because Photoshop's not going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. So this is another file that's done. I will go to File Menu, Save a Copy as I always do. This will be my last name, first name, Curved Paths. Always as a JPEG when I'm done always on the desktop, and always eight or high quality. Clicking and dragging with the pen tool tells Photoshop you intend to bend 
or curve your lines. Keep that in mind because you're going to do it again. And if you're in one of my graphics classes, you'll be doing it all the time when you get into Adobe Illustrator. So you might as well learn it here in Photoshop. And I'll see you in the next video where we talk about the combination of curved and straight paths to get a little more detail. I'll see you in a few minutes.